Welcome back to the 2 and 1, and today I'm taking a look at the Miami Dolphins and giving three bold predictions for them in their upcoming 2021 season. But before getting to that topic, just a quick question for those of you viewing. Simple question, what do you think the Dolphins record will be next year? And of course, keep in consideration that there's going to be 17 games. But getting straight into it, bold prediction number one is that the Miami Dolphins will again have no idea what to do with Tua, and they will be stuck with him. And what I mean by that is, I truly believe... What Tua Tungvaluwa provided in his rookie year, going kind of, I believe his record was, what, 6-3? and three, Put him in a spot to kind of make the playoffs. Went 10-6. and six. I think he's going to do a similar thing this year in the sense that he's going to be winning football games. He's going to put them in a position to make the playoffs. Yet, on the other hand, he's just not going to be looking well. While he's going to be winning games, it's not like it. It's going to seem like it's not due to him. He's not going to have the prettiest numbers. He's not going to have the prettiest throw. He's not going to have the best highlights. He's just not going to pass the eye test in the sense of looking like a confident quarterback in the pocket that can handle games, that can win games, that can lead a team. He's going to provide wins, but I don't think he's going to be that leader, that next tier type of quarterback talent that the Dolphins are looking for when you draft him at number five overall. And while that still might seem confusing, wait, he's going to win games, but he's still going to suck. What I mean by that is like, Perfect example is look at Jared Goff at the Rams. Jared Goff won plenty of games, took him to the Super Bowl, but yet he could still never get to that next level, and therefore they moved off of him. Jimmy Garoppolo with the Niners, good quarterback. He can win football games. He can manage a team, yet he's not that star set of guy that can lead a team, carry a team, but he win he wins games, yet Niners, they're moving off of him after they drafted Trey Lance to a similar thing. I'm not saying they're moving off of him this year, but I think he's going to follow a Jared Goff jimmy g type of path where he could get the job done he could give your team wins you can he could be a game manager but if you're going to need a fourth quarter drive you're going to need a drive to win the game if you're going to need a really tough matchup against a kansas city chiefs or a josh allen buffalo bills two is not going to be the guy that's going to go toe to toe with another future hall of fame quarterback or an mvp type of quarterback so dolphins i think they'll have a sex successful season i think two will win games again his record's going to look pretty but he's just not going to do great. I mean, guys like Mitch Trubisky have an above 500 record. Jared Goff, like I said, has a good record. Jimmy G has a good record, but that doesn't necessarily mean he's a good player. There's other guys out there like Kyler Murray. Some people have him top 10 quarterback, yet he's got a below 500 record. It just goes hand in hand sometimes. Justin Herbert, similar thing, one offensive rookie of the year, yet he went 7-9 and nine, or finished the season 7-9. and nine. It just goes to show sometimes the eye test is the best test there is when looking at and analyzing a quarterback. Again, I'm not saying two is a bust. I'm not saying he can't get the job done. The guys I'm comparing him to, Jared Goff got him to a Super Bowl. The guy I'm comparing him to, Jimmy G got him to a Super Bowl. But I'm just saying he's not going to be that next year guy. He's not going to take this huge step forward. So I guess you could summarize the bowl prediction in. Two is going to be the same exact guy that he was last year. He's not going to get worse. He's not going to improve a whole lot. But I think he's going to get the job done as far as win football games. And therefore, the Dolphins, they might be okay with it. They might be okay with the Jared Goff. They might be okay with the Jimmy G because with those guys, they got a playoff shot. They got a shot at the Super Bowl. They got a shot at a ring. And therefore, I think they're going to stick around with Tua, at least through his rookie contract. Moving into bull prediction number two. This is kind of somewhat contradicting to Tua being a guy that's going to win you football games. But I do think Joby, Jacoby Brissett, the backup to the Dolphins, will get at least one start this year, or at least get thrown in one time this year instead of Tua. Just like they babysat him with Ryan Fitzpatrick, I think they're going to do it with Jacoby Brissett. Jacoby Brissett, he's one of your better backups in the league. You know, he might not be Marcus Mariota, might not be Mr. Biscay. These guys aren't good, hence they're not started, but he's still an above average back in the league that if he goes in, you know, the game's not over. You could still rely on him to possibly win the game, manage the game. He's not going to, it's not... It's not like he's the worst quarterback in the league to have in the backup position. He's actually pretty above average. He's a starter at some point. And I think with that type of talent being behind Tua, that's going to be enough pressure to cause fans, to cause the front office to think after Tua has just one bad game of throwing a, an under 100 yards again, possibly two picks, should we throw in Jacoby Brissett? Or if Tua has one bad half, should we throw in Jacoby Brissett, just like they did with Ryan Fitzpatrick? Well, I don't think it's a good move. I think they need to just let Tua, you know, go through the growing pains if he's not going to go to that next level, at least find out. At least let him play. Give him the reps. Give him the time. If you keep taking a, the game away from him, he's never going to you know, feel comfortable in the pocket. If you truly believe, I don't think Tua will get to that next level. But if the Dolphins themselves truly believe Tua can get to that next level and be the franchise QB and prove it wrong, 
They need to give him the position to do it. They need to give him the reps to do it, the role to do it, the responsibility to, to do it. They can't keep taking it away from him and giving it to the backup like Fitzpatrick or like Jacoby Brissett. But to me, I don't think they'll do that. I think they're going to babysit him again at the first instant he has a bad half or a bad game. We're going to hear, already going to hear Jacoby Brissett being shouted through the stadium, shouted through the, by the fans. And I think we're going to see at least one start or one game where he's thrown in. And of course, I'm not going to say, oh, I was right if Tua gets hurt and Jacoby Brissett's thrown in. That's obviously an outlier, but I'm just saying at some point in time, Tua's going to have a bad half or game and Jacoby Brissett is going to get some starting time. Third bowl prediction, you can argue it's contradicting, but like I said, Third bowl prediction is the Dolphins make the playoffs. Might be contradicting to my faith and confidence in Tua Tagovailoa, but I did say the kid is going to win some football games, and it's not necessarily due to him. It's the talent around him. Looking at the receiving core, a lot of people don't talk about it because there's some injuries to this receiving core. You know, Devontae Parker's never healthy. Will Fuller's never healthy. Jalen Waddle's just a rookie. He's never healthy, it seems like. But on paper, Dolphins have one of the deepest receiving cores in the league. Like I said, you got Waddle, you got Fuller, you got Parker. But even outside of them, there's some pretty good guys on there. Preston Williams, when healthy, is pretty good. Jakeem Grant, he's more of a special team player. But the speed he has could be a type of X-factor type of receiver and some you know creative plays that Brian Flores could draw something up. You got a top 10, arguably top 7 tight end and Mike Kosicki. You got Hunter Long, a tight end out of the third round. Offensive line, I'm questionable of it. But they addressed it in the draft as well, getting you know, Liam Meikenberg, a big tackle, I believe, out of Notre Dame. I think it was Notre Dame he came from in the second round they got him in. Offensive line is getting there. The receiving core is as deep as it could be. Tight end position is very reliable. Backfield, they got faith in Miles Gaskin, and that tells me enough right there. They Dolphins had plenty of draft capital this year if they didn't believe in Miles Gaskin. I think we'll take a step forward. I think he could be a safety blanket for Tua. He could receive the ball. He could run the ball. He's a very well-rounded back. I like this Dolphins offense. I think it's good enough to make the playoffs. They went 10-6 and six last year. Defense, of course, is where the bread and butter is. It's even better than the offense. Up front, you got Christian Wilkins. You got Emmanuel Ogba. They drafted Jalen Phillips. He's kind of one of the top guys that's favored to possibly win defensive rookie of the year. That tells you something alone that you got a good player on your hands. I don't know if he's going to be the next Joey Bosa, Nick Bosa, Chase Young in his rookie year. But I think he has the talent to do it, and he has the supporting cast to do it to where he's not going to be double teamed. He might have a lot of one-on-one -on -one matchups that a big kid can win. Secondary, we know how good that is. Safety position was a little weak, but they addressed it in the draft. Javon Holland, this Dolphins team did an amazing job in the front office as a whole and Brian Flores as a whole of addressing the necessities they needed in this NFL draft, getting a top tackle, Liam Eikenberg, getting a safety they needed, getting a pass rusher. They did it all. They got a receiver. And outside of Javon Holland, you know there's more talent. Byron Jones, Xavier Howard. There's a holdout with him currently. I'm hoping that'll get fixed. I don't know what Xavier Howard's holding out for. I don't know if, if it's the money or not. The dude's like a sixth highest paid corner in the league, so I don't know. Him. Maybe if he thinks he's the best corner in the league, he deserves the most money. I don't know. At this point, being a little greedy, it's not like he's getting you know, chump change money. He's not on a rookie deal anymore. He's getting his money's worth. So I don't know what that is, but I'm hoping it'll get fixed. They signed Jason Cordy, a guy that's older and it's, the lesser half between him and his brother. But if he transfers the safety position or if he could just ex provide experience and knowledge to some of these younger players, it's a good signing. Like I said, this Dolphins defense did amazing last year. Xavier Howard had 10 picks. I don't think he's going to repeat that. But in 17 games, an extra game to do it, who's it, who am I to say he won't do it? Overall, I like this Dolphins roster head to toe. And I think it's organized well and coached well by Warren Flores. Well, I don't believe in Tua Tungvaloa long-term to be the next best guy, the franchise of the Dolphins. I think he could serve a Jared Goff, Jimmy G role in the first few years. He doesn't look good. He doesn't play great. Yet, he somehow manages to pull out a win at the end of the day. And therefore, I think this team will make the playoffs. Record-wise, I think 11-6 and six sounds about right for him. I think there's a chance they can make a running at the division. If Tua does take the next step forward, you know, maybe I'll be wrong on this on one bowl prediction that Tua will be the same. Maybe he'll be better. And then maybe I'll be right on them making the playoffs because he got better. I don't know. It could be a mix right of right and wrongs between these three predictions. But I feel pretty confident in them. Again, Tua is going to be the same guy. Second, Jacoby Brissett at some point is going to get some playing time because of Tua's performance. Not just because of some fluke injury. And three, Dolphins are going to make the playoffs because of this stacked roster. Of course, that's also pending you know, they fix with Xavier Howard. It's also pending. Devontae Parker, Will Fuller, and Jalen Waddle aren't all hurt like they typically are sometimes. You know, there's a lot of contingencies in this, but assuming it's a healthy full roster this year, I have confidence in the Dolphins to make a playoff run. But 
As always, guys, let me know what you think. Do you agree with this list? Do you disagree with this list? Of course, referring back to the question of the day, what do you think their record will be in 2021? To me, 11-6 sounds right about right. Kind of the same record as last year, except, except an extra win. I think they're going to get it done. I think they'll get a playoff spot in the wild card round and possibly make a running at the division. As always, guys, thanks for watching. Two-minute warning.